my dear brothers and sisters and my dear children, today is the second Sunday of the season of Lent. And the gospel proclaims the story of transfiguration. Transfiguration occurs, dear brothers and sisters, after Peter's confession that Jesus is the Messiah and after Jesus' prediction about his passion. In this event, we hear that Elijah and Moses appear with Jesus. These two figures, dear brothers and sisters, are significant in the history of Israel. Moses represents the law, the Torah, that guided the lives of Israel. And Elijah, one of the important prophets, in the history of Israel, Elijah helped Israelites to stay faithful to Yahweh, the only God. And even, dear brothers and sisters, some Israelites even believed that Elijah's return would signal the coming of Messiah. So the appearance of these two figures which Jesus Christ signifies Jesus' continuity with the law and the prophets. And then also that Jesus is the fulfillment of all that was promised to the people of Israel. Dear brothers and sisters, Coming back to the incident, the transfiguration, when Jesus' divinity is revealed in transfiguration, as we read in today's gospel, how did the three disciples who were with Jesus respond? How did they respond? Well, they were terrified. Peter was confused. And Peter suddenly said, let us make three tents, one for you, one for Elijah, and one for Moses. In a way, Peter was happy to, to see this vision. And so ready for a, let's say, a joyful celebration, because some, this, is, this was something that, re, that they really expected. And then also, this also reminds, the Peter's suggestion also reminds, the harvest festival of the tabernacles, which prevailed there among the Israelites. The history says that Israelites lived in booths, in temporary tents. And during the season of harvest, they celebrated a feast and made merry before God. If you read chapter 23 of Leviticus, the book of Leviticus, you could read the historical background of this feast. So dear brothers and sisters, during this week of celebration, they were dwelling in booths, in tents. So joyfully they celebrated this. So for Peter, this, the joy of Peter turns to that liturgical custom, dear brothers and sisters. And then in the incident we find a cloud came. A cloud then comes and with the cloud came a voice, a heavenly voice. A heavenly voice identified Jesus as the beloved son. You are my beloved son. With you, I am pleased with. And then also, there's a message from this voice, the heavenly voice. The message for us is, dear brothers and sisters, so this is my beloved son. 
listen to him. So this is the day's message, dear brothers and sisters, the second Sunday of Lent. Listen to Jesus. So Jesus, after this, he was left alone after the voice came. No Moses, no Elijah. They have disappeared. Only Jesus. So Jesus was there alone. So we got to understand when the voice came that it's Jesus should be listened to. When we go back to the Old Testament, dear brothers and sisters, again, we could recall on Mount Sinai, God revealed himself to the people of Israel and said, I, the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt. And then here, in transfiguration, which some of, some of the theologians call it the theophany of the New Testament, it was God himself who revealed to us Jesus as his son. And then he gives us a commandment, listen to him, listen to my son. Dear brothers and sisters, why did God command disciples to listen to Jesus? Well, first of all, to his apostles, the disciples, simply because they were not ready to listen to Jesus. What preceded before this scene of transfiguration was that Jesus' prediction of his passion and death. And the disciples were not ready to accept it, accept the truth, the reality. In response, what did Peter do? Peter began to rebuke him. So here is a divine commandment, listen to him, to his apostles. And today, God commands us to listen to Jesus. Because, dear brothers and sisters, this Paschal mystery, the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, is still a mystery to all of us. But we are given a commandment to listen to him. God commands us to believe in him, to trust in him, to have faith in him. How? Well, we are in the season of Lent. We can make some time to read the scriptures and to reflect on scriptures, dear brothers and sisters. Because the moment, the moment we read the scriptures, it's a moment when the border between the heaven and the earth appears to fade. A moment where God's presence touches our lives deeply when we read the scriptures. A moment where we feel God's glory, dear brothers and sisters. Why do we listen to Jesus? Because he alone can forgive all our sins. Because he took our sins upon himself and removed them once and for all in his death on the cross. Why should we listen to Jesus? Because Jesus is greater than all other human beings who ever lived in this earth, dear brothers and sisters. Why should we listen to Jesus? Because Jesus is eternal, Son of God, the deity incarnate. And dear brothers and sisters, it's Jesus who shows the radiance of God's glory. Why should we listen to Jesus? Because Jesus is the last word of God, the Father, and the prescription of God for all our ills, for all our sicknesses. And dear brothers and sisters, why should we listen to Jesus? Because Jesus is the Messiah promised in the Old Testament. And then finally, dear brothers and sisters, why should we listen to Jesus? Jesus is the beloved of God, the Redeemer. 
So we are in the season of Lent. Listen to Jesus. Because God the Father tells us that he is God. He is God's Son with whom God himself is pleased with. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.